Here we go. On the left-hand side, we see the original profile concept diagram for the 3D in Music exhibit version 4, this one here. On the right-hand side, we see the realization of it in a 3D environment over here. And finally, finally, we see the advertisement of it in our blog, the publicity part of it. 3D in Music Interactive Orchestra Kits. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing and Vision and Sound Part 15, Publicity, Float, Noticing. In today's episode, we re-entered by reflecting its, we felt it's time for publicity and feedback now that the exhibit, which you just saw, has been completed and turned in four days ago. And we did that. Uh, also, we want to start getting feedback before and after the exhibition opens, which will open from the 16th through July 5th. Feedback informs the flow. And also, we ended up developing new vocabulary, labeling the parts of this exhibit. For example, um, front display, back display, left display, right display, center displays, etc., etc., etc. And we learned the power of... Uh, vocabulary in our music work. The second thing that we did with our music work is that we began some new compositions using the seven note scale that we've been working with in this series uh, and we've christened these float one and float three at the moment. They are both sourced from noodling around on the piano, the real piano, then on our keystep MIDI piano and we entered them this way. So this one sounds like this. And then we began to get very intrigued by noting that we were using passing notes, which is something we came up with in our very first stream two years ago. And then this version three is using stuff like this. Not only that, not only that, we did a bunch of work with our um, 3D exhibit. I want to show you this. The, um, our exhibit is where this red dot is, and we are writing what's called a pod tour. And this pod tour goes all through the exhibition, which opens again in four days. And we can only show you our part of it at the moment. But as, watch, watch here in the bottom right in the text area here, uh, our exhibit description will pop up. One, two, right there. Sidearms 3D and Music Interactive Orchestra Kits. Now, we want it to trigger a little bit later when we turn the corner in the pod and go like that, and it'll be on our left. So we spent some time with that. This is just a 10-second clip to show you what happens. We'll show you again what happens. There are, I don't know, one or 200 exhibits in this exhibition, and ours is one of them. And so people can ride these pods. I'll show you a picture of it in a minute. And then at, uh, the exhibitors have the option to um, trigger a description. So we spent a bunch of time in today working on that. Again, this is the front of the exhibit. Now, invisible, but right here where that yellow gold line touches the sidewalk is a pod text trigger. There you can see, now you see that little mini, miniature red cube there. That's what that is. And like we said, it's cur it was currently located at where the gold line touches the sidewalk. And that's our drum kit and all that over there. So the pod's going to come around the corner, but the instructions for the trigger were have it within 10 meters of the tram way. So we made a 10 meter radius circle here, and that shows where we thought the tram was going to get triggered. It would touch the circle here and then, you know, show the text. Here comes the tram. What tram? Looks like this, this little cute little car. Looks like a Disneyland car. And people sit in that and ride it. 
So it turns the corner, and we just showed you a video of that, and then it goes on, and then it comes down this way. Well, in, because it was triggering too soon, it was triggering when the pod was right there. That's when the text got triggered, and people could be looking straight ahead, so we wanted them... To be quite honest, we're experimenting. So if you're riding the pod, you're probably looking all over and rubbernecking anyway, so who knows if they're bothering to read the text or not. But anyway, just for grins, we decided to experiment with moving the trigger point over to here, and then we have to test this later. We couldn't test it today and see if the next time a pod goes around, it waits a little bit before it triggers the text. And this is the text, the Second Life 19th Birthday Exhibit. So this is the relocated location. That's us standing at it. And here we are standing at it when it's back to being invisible. And we're waiting for the next pod. Wait for the next pod to come around the corner here. And then the, we, the place where the pod currently triggers is here. So at the moment, if you're in the pod, uh, the trigger used to be here. Now the trigger's over here. I'm sure that makes sense. So what we're going to do to wrap up, that was that was a lot of fun. What we're going to do to wrap up is go back to our music and share with you what we're calling Float 1. Float 3 is still kind of in progress, but Float 1's pretty decent, pretty decent, and it's short and sweet. And it sounds like this. So that concludes today's stream. What we like about Float 1, we picked it out by ear from our seven note scale and then went back and analyzed it in terms of four, count them, four tonalities. Um, and that's what all this chart junk is. But the interesting point is, depending on what tonality you look at it on, it either ends on a tonic rest or it ends on a clash ambivalent or it ends on a floaty subdominant. So the same the same piece of music that you just heard. The other thing is these are all using 3-4 and 4-3 and 3-3 chords, which are extremely traditional Western chords. Um, and the reason we're working on float three is we want to get away into a different set of chords. Uh, here's a lot more 3-3s, three but we're now adding two threes and four twos and four ones. We're even adding a five one. So these are what we called extended chords when we first began working with extended composing techniques. So these, here's one of those nice, you know, pretty chords. But here's one that's more dissonant. And this one. So it it's almost jazzy. I mean, when jazz came along, it was a big deal because they were using dissonant chords that traditional classical Western music shunned. Almost sounds Celtic. So anyway, um, our ideas for next time are to continue uh, working with continue working with publicity for the 3D and Music 4. Uh, we'd like to, once it opens, we're going to do some individual and group tours and record them and continue composing with our seven note scales using Float 3 and beyond. Shout outs to Miss <laughs> Cleo, who inspires us, Mr. Spatz, who annoys us, but in a friendly way. Silent Lurker, we appreciate you. Lolly Gagger and Ferenc List stop by today. Brand new. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back. Do keep on streaming.